V B N the rich video blog network home to top 10 list of everything and anything great personality profiles and a whole lot more R V B N Dorica Massachusetts Good afternoon, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. This is Rich again, back for your first video blog of the day for Sunday, September 25th, 2016, around 2.49 in the afternoon in Dorica, Massachusetts. Very nice and sunny day out today. But a little, little coolish, about 62, 63 degrees. Some news to report on the RVBN Newswire. Do, 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 do. Last night, the Boston Red Sox beat the Tampa Bay Rays by the score of 6 to 4. Grand Slam by Dustin Pedroia. Did it in for the, for the Red Sox. Also, Rick Porcello got his 22nd win. So he's probably wrapped up the Cyan Award for the American League this year. Also, Team Canada beat Team Russia in the semifinals of the World Cup of Hockey by score 5 to 3. It's going to be Team Canada against either Sweden or Europe. And looks like Team Canada's going to win the World Cup of Hockey. The LA Dodgers won the National League Western Division title. The Washington Nationals, the National League East title, and sad news to report in the world of baseball. Marlins ace pitcher Jose Fernandez passed away early Sunday morning in a boating accident. He was only 24 years old. Today's game between the Marlins and the Braves at Marlins Park has been called off. And Prayers to Jose Fernandez's family in this time of need. And that's about it on Ya VBN News. Why do 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 be back in a flash. My first video blog subject of the day is about the form a WWE tag team that can am connection slash strike force. This tag team was around two and a half years in the WWE. First, it was the Can Am Connection with Rick Martel and Tom Zink. And around August of 1987, it became Rick Martel and Tito Santana as Strike Force. Um, Rick Martel and Tom Zink came into the WWE. In the fall of 1986, they were previously in the AWA and in International Wrestling in Montreal, Canada. And Zinc and Martel formed a tag team called the Can Am Connection. They were baby faces. They immediately got over with the crowd big time with double drop kicks and stuff. And they were beating heel tag teams in the house shows. They had some big victories over Kamala and Sika. And the biggest one they had was against um, D Don the Magnificent One Morocco and Cowboy Bob Orton at WrestleMania 3. And the Can Am Connection started a feud with the newly turned heel Islanders, Haku and Tama with Bobby the Brain Heenan. Um, the Islanders turned heel on the, during a match with the Can Am Connection in May of 1987 on an edition of WWE Superstars of Wrestling. And the Can Am Connection fought the Islanders at several house shows. Both, both teams would, would double disqualification. But the Can-Am Connection was was slated to be WWE Tag Team Champions in later on in the year 1987. But Tom Zink quit the WWE over, over pay dispute. 
and the story went that Rick Martel and Tom Zink like renegotiated the contracts and, and behind each other's back and Martel got a bigger um, contract than Tom Zink because Martel was in the business longer and he was former AEWA world champion that got Tom Zink mad he left the promotion. The WWE buried Tom Zink on television. Rick Martel said on television, he's a quitter. And a few weeks l later, like in a singles match between um, Rick Martel being a preliminary wrestler, the Islanders come down and attack Martel and Tito Santana, who was in the Spanish announce booth came down and saved Rick Martel and then next thing you know a new tag team is formed Strike Force with Rick Martel and Tito Santana originally it was going to be called the Border Patrol but it the Border Patrol sounded like a heelish tag team and Rick Martel and Tito Santana were baby faces this kind of rejuvenates um, I mean, Tio Santana's career a little bit because during the time he lost the Intercontinental title to Macho Man Randy Savage um, into, into um, teaming with Strike Force, he was kind of like maybe pushing down to kind of job status. And uh, Strike Force used double drop kicks, used like um, Martel used his finishing maneuver to Boston Crab and Tito Santana, the flying forearm and the figure four leg lock. They had they continued a feud with the Islanders, had a great house show run with them. It culminated with two referees and steel cage matches around the WWE circuit. And in November of 1987, Strike Force got the WWE tag team titles at a superstars taping over the Hot Foundation. But the Hot Foundation continued to t defend the titles into that title switch was shown on television. And Strike Force held the WWE Tag Team titles for approximately four and a half months. They had, they continued to feud with the Hot Foundation and they had a blow off at the main event in 1988 and also they had some steel cage matches with the Hot Foundation. And in March of 1988, at WrestleMania 4, um, Strike Force lost the WWE Tag Team titles to Axe and Smash with Je of Demolition with help from Mr. Fuji, Demolition's manager. And Strike Force continued to feud with Demolition, but they were going to go down cards of the D WWE. They were kind of slated to feud with uh, the newly heel tag team, um, the Fabulous Rougeau Brothers, but um, Rick Martel's wife got sick and he needed time off to to take care of her. So at a, at a Superstars taping in California in June of 1988, the, the demolition um, used a decapitator outside the lane on Rick Martel injuring his neck and suffering a concussion and that wrote, wrote him out of the storylines for several months leaving Tio Santana basically nothing to do and basically becoming a singles wrestler, getting no push whatsoever, just becoming a job to the stars. Strike Force was reunited at WrestleMania 5 to face off against the Brain Busters, which was Tully Blanchett and Arn Anderson. And Strike Force broke up at this paid preview when like Tito Santana accidentally hit Rick Martel with the flying form. Rick Martel just walked out on Tito Santana. He was being booed heavily and strike force um, lost. Tito Santana did the JLB on the PPV to Tully Blanchard. One, two, three. And after the interview, um, Rick Martel said he was tiring of killing 
a loser like Tito Santana. And then Tito Santana let Martel have a feud that lasted well over a year without a decisive victor. But it was Rick Martel who always, always beat Tito Santana in the house shows throughout the WWE or being the double disqualification or Tito winning by count of the disqualification. Tito Santana actually asked the WWE that he wanted to turn heel and face Rick Martel during this feud, but the decision was made that um, Rick Martel was going to be turning heel because he told Pat Patterson, Pat Patterson and Rick Martel are from Quebec, Canada, and Pat Patterson wanted to take care of his like fellow Quebecian. Plus, they had the model gimmick all, 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 all like figured out at that point. It's, I, I couldn't imagine Tito Santana being a heel and, and stuff like that. This was a the kind of a decline for Tito Santana after Strike Force permanently broke up and eventually became El Matador Tito Santana, which that kind of a little bit rejuvenated his career for about a few months, but eventually was just, just basically a job into the stars. Strike Force was kind of a great tag team in my humble opinion kind of the pretty boy face tag team kind of a version of the rock and roll express slash fantastics in that time period where all the girls would go crazy and they actually have a theme song girls in cars which was pretty awesome and strike force ranks right up there with one of the best baby face wwe tag team Champions of all time. They should have had a long go run with the titles, but Demolition was coming on, and they, the WWE had to put their tag team titles on Demolition sooner or later. And that's about it on that. Be back with the second and final video plug of the night, which will be about the former World Football League, which lasted one and a half seasons in the mid 70s. This was a competitor to the NFL. And keep calm, everybody. I'm a Julie Bunny guy. Molly Osmond of the BCCO accents. Nice, nice legs. Elizabeth that's so, so stunning. She's the best. Amy Sweezy's awesome, awesome. Amy. And Bobby Gibbs of ABC 11 has a sweet southern accent. And Linda Church of WPIX Channel 11 New York is such a rocking cougar. She's got the best legs in New York City. And in the words of Dee Patel last week, no bus by now. R-V-B-N.